welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a review of the first book in the Fairy Chronicles series, The Hunter's Moon. Oh gosh, there's a pretty good shine on it, but um, this is the book, The Hunter's Moon. I first started reading The Hunter's Moon several months ago and I picked it up and I read a couple chapters and I just didn't finish it. I don't really know why, I just didn't get into it and I didn't want to read it at that time, so I put it down. Then about a week ago, I asked on my Instagram what book I should read next. The Chronicles of Fairy or 180 Seconds. And The Chronicles of Fairy won, so that is what I ended up reading. And I actually really enjoyed it this time around. I am so glad that everyone voted for The Chronicles of Fairy because I loved it. I really did. I think there are some things about the way it's written that are probably why I didn't finish it last time, but I will get to those. I first want to go over the positives and then the negatives, which there's nothing really structurally negative to me about this book. I did look at some reviews on Goodreads and some people really loved it and some people really hated it. And the people who hated it hated things about it that the people that loved the book loved about it. So it really is all up to preference. And I thought that it was a very good book. It is a fantasy, which I love fantasy. I haven't gotten to read a ton of fantasy, so I really did enjoy reading it. It's about fairies and not like the little fairies that are in Peter Pan, but fairies based on the Irish myths or in the Irish lore, which the only other time that I have heard of these fairies is when I'm talking with a friend about her characters because she is writing some books uh, that include fairies like this and the Unseelie Court and stuff like that. So I have heard of some of it from her, but before her, I had never heard of any of this. So it was nice to have a little bit of background. Um, so I wasn't completely caught off guard by a lot of things in the book, but it was also nice to have something new. Like I haven't read a book about these fairies. And so that was really cool. I think the writing was very good. I was very impressed with it. I will say something about the writing in my negatives later, but it really wasn't anything about the writing itself just certain things that I don't like in a book, but I think the writing was very good. Yeah, very enjoyable, very descriptive, and I really didn't have a big problem with it. I thought it was very good. Nothing stood out to me over and over again as being wrong. This book is full of adventure, and I really, really enjoyed that. For me, a book has to be very fast-paced with lots going on every chapter, and this book had that. It kind of reminded me of The Hobbit in that there were a lot of little adventures that happened. And in The Hobbit, there's an adventure just about every chapter. I think every chapter has some big adventure because it was written for children and that's the way Tolkien wrote it. But I felt like this book, book was a little bit similar. Maybe not every chapter had something going on. Um, the chapters were kind of short as well, which I talked about in my Like a Feather review that when a book has short chapters, I tend to read more and I tend to read it faster. So that was kind of nice. But I did feel like there was a lot going on, maybe not a lot of major things going on, but just little happenings, little adventures that kept the story moving. And I really appreciated that because it could have been really, really boring. Like I said, there's not a huge thing going on for a lot of the book. So that could have really dragged and been really boring. You're following Gwen around as she travels Ireland in search of her cousin and in search of the fairies. And so that could have been really boring, but O.R. Melling added a lot of twists and turns, a lot of ups and downs, and just a lot of little mini adventures and people that Gwen met. And I just really did enjoy it. I'm, yeah, I think the book, the book was really well written for me at least. I know that's one of the things that people on Goodreads said they didn't like was that it was so up and down and and there wasn't one like huge adventure going on. It was just kind of a lot of little things, but I thought it worked really well. The ending was a complete roller coaster. Like it really, really was, especially the last couple chapters because when you get to like the big climax of the book, it was really anybody's guess what would happen and it really was a roller coaster. Uh, you think that the group is going to succeed and then you think they're gonna lose and then you think they're really gonna succeed and you just don't know what to think until it happens. And that was really cool. Um, really kept the end moving along. I really did like it. And 
The epilogue holds a huge surprise as well, so definitely read the prologue and the epilogue if you read it. I didn't used to read the prologues and epilogues of books because they never really seemed important to me, but I wrote a prologue for one of my books that's not out yet, I haven't finished it, but I wrote a prologue and I figured that I should probably read the prologues and epilogues of other books. And I actually did put an epilogue in Here's to the Underdogs. So I came to learn that they are very important and they really are in this book. If you don't read especially the epilogue, you're really, really gonna miss out on something big. <laughs> so you have to read it. It's kind of like with Marvel movies and how they always put the little end credit scene. That's kind of how I think of epilogues sometimes. They're not necessarily dire to the story, like the story still ends, but sometimes you miss a really big thing that happens afterwards. So definitely read the prologue and epilogue of this book. Huge surprise and I loved it. I cried a lot during the last couple chapters. It had been a rough week anyway, so it was kind of just emotional and teary, but a lot of things happened that made me tear up. And it wasn't always sadness either. There were some really, really sweet things and I was just like, I loved it. I really did. I also really, really loved the characters in this book. And I thought that a couple of them had really good arcs as well. Again, some people on Goodreads didn't like the characters and didn't think we saw some of them enough, which maybe is true, um, especially for the relationship between two of the characters. It would have been nice to have seen that relationship a little bit more rather than just taking the author's word for it. But I didn't have a huge problem with that because the book wasn't really about those two characters. It was about Gwen, really. And following her around and she had a lot of growth in the book and the fairy king had a lot of growth and I really really liked it. Um, I really liked the characters a lot and I don't know how the next book is gonna be. I'm really excited to start the next book. There are four books in this series. I'm a little bit afraid to get to the last book because it's just really really long. It's I think like 680 pages so I'm a, I'm a bit afraid but I'm really excited for the other for these books so I'm not sure if um, the same characters are going to be talked about for the rest of the series or not. I, I don't know. I'm really excited to find out, but I did really like these characters. And if we do see them in the next books, if the books are about them, then I really hope they will get some more development. That would be really awesome. Okay, now on to the negatives. Some of these negatives might be positives for other people. And I actually did mention one of them in the positives. But for me, reading a book, they're kind of negatives. So the first one is that there was a lot of description in the book. A lot of description about the countryside and, you know, the Irish countryside and so many descriptions about everything, everywhere Gwen went. And, you know, that is a plus for a lot of people. And it was good writing. There were beautiful descriptions. But for me, that makes a book drag quite a bit because I don't really tend to envision things in my head very much. I like to just have a lot of action and keep the book going because when there's description, I'm just reading all these words that the author put in, but they don't really mean a whole lot to me. So I think that's why I didn't make it through it the first time I read it because there is just a lot of description and a lot of more like flowery writing. And I just want the author to, um, to get to the point and just keep the story moving. I don't really care about all of the description. So that was a negative for me. But like I said, it's a positive for a lot of people. And the description was beautiful and the writing was really beautiful. I just, I would like it a little bit more cut and dried sometimes. There is a little bit of witchcraft in the book. There's really only one chapter and I didn't like that too much. I mean, I haven't read a lot of things with witchcraft. I kind of stay away from that, but it's not something that's going to keep me from ever reading a book. And I'm going to read the next books in the series, even if there is a little bit of the same things, but I'm not really a huge fan of witchcraft. Why I, that's why I haven't read Harry Potter, even though maybe I would like it. And I know it's a, a huge fandom and a, um, a series that a lot of people love, but I'm not really a fan of witchcraft. I don't really mind Lord of the Rings so much because there's like wizards and it's not, I guess there is dark magic, but there's not like as much dark magic. And I don't know, this one, uh, the one scene, I was like, okay, it's not bad. If it were any worse, I probably would have liked it a lot less, but it wasn't bad really just a little bit much for me. I don't know. That's just how I was raised. I, I've, I was raised not being allowed to read Harry Potter because there was witchcraft in it and a lot of things. And so that's kind of stuck with me. And while I'm not quite so, I don't stick to that rule quite so much in my own life. Like I don't 
like I said, I don't care too much if there's a little bit of witchcraft and I love magic as long as it's not like dark magic. So it kind of depends. So I think maybe for me, if the book and the magic is all completely fantastical and has nothing to do with this world or with demons or anything like that, then, then I'm totally fine. But if it is more realistic magic, because there is bad magic and I do believe in demons and spirits and stuff and so I don't want to mess with any of that. So when it's more real in a book, that's when I have a bigger problem. But when it's more on the fantastical side and you're not dealing with demons or spirits or whatever, then I don't care so much. So the one chapter in the book where witches were involved wasn't a huge deal to me. I didn't care too much. It was a short scene and it was more on the fantastical made up side. But along that same line, there were a couple biblical parallels, especially concerning the bad guy in the story, the big antagonist, and I didn't really like that very much at all. So I don't know, it was doable. I did read it and I, I did enjoy the book overall, but I would have liked it more if the antagonist had been completely made up and not referenced and not a reference to something biblical. That's just my opinion. I love Christian based books and Christian fiction, but I do not like books that are not Christian fiction that use Christian elements and biblical elements. It just feels wrong to me and it can get kind of messy. So that was a negative for me, but it wasn't a prominent enough feature for me to hate the book. Okay, spoilers ahead, so watch out. My final negative is about the final battle. Now, I don't really like huge battle scenes. I mean, if they're really well written and well paced and there's a lot going on, then I like them. But I think sometimes they can just seem to drag a lot. That being said, I also think that this battle scene was a little bit too rushed. The book is not leading up to a battle throughout the entire book. There's no battle being talked about. Gwen is just trying to get her cousin back. She's trying to find her cousin. And that's all it is. So then in the last three or four chapters, they decide to fight this big battle. <laughs> and so one chapter they're talking about it and then they, there are a couple pages that they spend planning for the battle and then they do the battle. And it's so quick and it felt kind of rushed. And the battle itself was really, really short. So I think the battle could have been lengthened just a little bit to give it more of an impact. It was, like I said, just really, really quick. They came and they fought and people started getting hurt. And so then they left and the battle was over basically. I was like, okay, not what I expected. I expected there to be like a resurge. They retreated. So I was like, okay, that's fine, retreat. I expected them to come back and fight more. And that didn't happen. So I think that was a negative. Yeah, the battle definitely could have been a little bit more impactful. It wasn't super impactful and it felt really rushed. But overall, the book was really good and the battle did serve a purpose in the end. So. I don't think it could have been taken out completely and it wasn't as horrible as it could have been but it just could have been built up a little bit more. So those are my thoughts on The Hunter's Moon. I have been waiting to, to do this review so that I could start the next book so now I finally have it done and I can read the next one and I'm really excited. So overall thoughts on the book. It was a really great book. Uh, it was fast-paced which is great for me. Fantasy which I loved and only a couple of negatives that weren't super huge. So overall, a really good book. And if you like fantasy, low fantasy, I guess, and fairies and magic, there's not a ton of magic, but a little bit um, fairy magic, fairy glamour. But if you like that sort of thing, then definitely check it out because I think it was totally worth the read and I loved it. Well, I don't know when this review is going to be going out. So I don't know if I should say Merry Christmas or Happy New Year or what. I am filming this before Christmas. Oh yeah, the book only took me four days to read and one of those days I didn't do any reading at all. So again, I read it fairly quickly, at least by my standards. I'm not the type of person who can read more than one book in a day and it usually takes me two or three days at least to read a book. So by my standards, I read this very quickly. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope that you have been having a good week and have a great next week and I will see you in the next video. Have a blessed day everyone!